Welcome back to the 2011 Virginia State Nine Ball Championships. The eighth annual Virginia State Nine Ball Championships brought to you by Inside Pool Magazine, bringing you this high def uh, live feed over the internet. Also by Diamond Billiards. We're coming to you live from Diamond Billiards LLC in Midlothian, Virginia, just outside of Richmond, Virginia. I'm Brian Keller. I'm here alongside Alvin from Inside Pool. Alvin, welcome. Hey, buddy. And we've got some terrific pool. This is going to be a great match. We've got John Newton and Larry Crossell. Larry is a former state nine ball champion. He won uh, this tournament in 2000 and. And his opponent, a former winner of this event, also at the Lothian, Virginia, Mr. Larry Cassell. Let's hear it for him. Gentlemen, you your legs to first break. All right, Larry, everybody. Larry, Ryan, Great. Larry won the tournament in 2008. He was our last winner before Brandon Schuff won back to back. All right, now everything's good. So Newton wins the break and uh, wins the lag, and he will have the first break, and we'll get started in this tournament, on this match. Race to nine. Race to nine here. Midlothian, Virginia. It's been a quite an interesting couple days. It's been quite an interesting setup. Setting this puppy up here. Getting everything square, so I think everything's good now with the audio and the video and the internet and all that. I'm so. very impressed with you guys have how you guys have come since last year. Last year was your first year streaming this for us, and this year, yep. holy cow, it's like a quantum leap. Thanks, man. We've done a lot of events uh, over the past year, and I was just thinking, yeah, this was like. No, I was involved in the first ever live pool stream back in 2002. Mm -hmm. So, just the evolution of since those days of live streaming is amazing. And, and here's Joe, oh my goodness, with the opening break and almost cans the nine ball right out of the chute. Which does count in this tournament. Yes, it does. Nine ball's good in all pockets here. And the, but the only way any of us are here is because of the viewers that are watching and supporting our sponsors, like Simona's Cloth, uh, Kamui Tips, of course, Inside Pool Magazine. Look at that beautiful nice shot, two shot. and one. Played it two-way and made it. John Newton takes a 1-0 lead on the opening salvo. Quite, quite impressive. It's all about, you know, the pool community, the fans, the players, the people that do what, like what we do here, the news media. We, we all work together to form the pool family. And we, we revisit our family members uh, at, at every event. That's the way I see it, you know. That's so. a nice way to look at it, Alvin, and we, we really appreciate you coming to town and, and no doing problem. such a great job with us. This is a lot of fun. Yeah, it's been an amazing adventure for me uh, doing this and glad to be a part of it. So so what was the first match streamed live over the Internet? I believe it was at the uh, Amsterdam Billiards. And okay. it was the it was the uh, the world summit of pool. Oh yeah, right. Okay. In 2002, and we, my friend Bryce Eshelman and I, we had a company called WorldPool.com uh -huh. where we did pool DVDs. We made the first ever pool DVDs, okay. match DVDs and stuff. So, and we had that company for a few years, and then I kind of broke off on my own, and because I was doing a lot of the editing, and I did Kid Delicious's. Uh, oh yeah couple DVDs, instructional DVDs, uh -huh. and then worked with uh, with a few of the other companies. Very and cool. And now I'm working with Inside Pool, so. Excellent. JR's a great, uh, it's a really smart guy. And he's a visionary. He is, He's man. got some I, great ideas about what, what he's going to do with this, and I'm, I'm very excited about it. Yeah, and he listens to me and knows, you know, 
he doesn't just think he's right all the time, and we, <laughs> and I don't either. You know, so that's a we really work. That's really it cool. really does, man. If yeah. if my if what I think is right, he. He that's says, okay, that's what's John just played a very smart shot. How cool of a boss is that, though? That's that's a great boss to have. Really? I, like I think that's the way I run my business, which is kind of cool. So, he trusts what I see, I trust what he sees, and uh, thanks to everybody out there for continuing to support our streams. Well, you guys do a good job. It's, it's fun to watch. I was talking to uh, somebody who came in the pool room couple of minutes ago and they said they were home watching the stream before they came in here and said they were amazed at the quality of the stream so I'm, I'm glad to hear it's a great uh, great picture for you guys watching at home on the internet so John Newton looked to take a 2-0 lead very quickly here and um, I gotta like him from here he played a very smart shot to get that rack opened up and make that first those first couple of balls it's a sign of a good player when it's story time in the control booth and he's just running out. Running know, right? out. Exactly. There's no drama going on. There's no nothing There's catches no your eye. Involved. That's right. It's just two nothing John Newton in this race to nine. This is going to be a side. quick match, Brian. I'm telling well, you, my maybe. friend. Maybe we'll see. Um, they I both shoot super fast. Guys even are, if it, they, they guys are both. It goes hill players. hill. It's going to be boom boom That's boom. True. They're they're both very capable. Fire the banana ball together. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. They're going to be cranking nine balls in pretty quickly here. John, uh, John's one of those players. I've known him for probably 14 or 15 years since I moved back to Richmond. And he's one of those guys who just has so much heart. Um, last year, I guess it was last year, he had four or five straight matches where he was down down one or two games his opponent was on the hill and came back to win on the hill in four straight matches. It was really quite remarkable. So John breaks off, uh, does not leave a shot, and Larry Crossell steps to the table for the first time. Okay. Let's see what he can do. And you see Diamond Billiards in the background there. Look at that nice pool room. Can you see how clean those chairs are with the HD and everything? Look at you know, this place they, is clean, man. This, this is it a smells room. good. It's I know clean. it does. Yeah. You know, this room's been open for three and a half years. I was just talking to Cindy Dorsey. It's on my uh, top. Who's one of the owners. Five. And and it is just remarkable. Clean as a whistle. And they keep improving on it, making it better, you know, almost daily. Uh, every time I come in here, I'm impressed with whatever new thing they put up. They have a great menu, uh, great full bar, terrific beer selection. It's just a great place to come play pool. And even if you don't play pool, it's a great place to come. Yeah, it's definitely a stop. I mean, look at the action that you can get here, too, if you're going to or from the U.S. Open. Exactly. You can get some players. You don't have to play on this table, which is brutal. <laughs> <laughs> It, this di the diamonds are, are tough to play on anyway. I've seen some really tough balls. diamonds over there. But, but this one is this one is particularly tough. Now Larry's played a nice two-way shot. That was very smart actually. He's left John with a very difficult. I don't. He's going to kick at this, or he could jump it. I guess it'd be a tough jump though, long jump. The last Seminal tour we did in at Capone's in Florida which is my favorite pool room. They have a Rodney Morris's triple shimmed Brunswick gold crown three, but it's triple shimmed. The rails are cut that they played the, uh, the Seminole event on. The rails are cut to that size, and it was a tough table. I'll man. bet. So you can get tough Brunswicks, too. Oh, I know. Mm -hmm. No, I have one. <laughs> I have an old Brunswick anniversary in my house, and it's uh, it's no bargain either. Mm -hmm. I, I prefer the video... To, if it's if it's going to be on plate on diamonds, have a short race. <laughs> but the Brunswicks, they seem to get out faster on them. They're a little bit they're a little bit more. Yeah, it's, I think forgiving. they're more forgiving. I, yeah, no, they I agree. I absolutely agree. Yeah, I have to be on top of my game to play on a play on a diamond. That's for sure. Oh man, I do not. Yeah, I don't even do it. I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> 
Gosh, Alvin, if I didn't want to embarrass myself, I'd never pick up a cue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this guy here shoots good, I'll tell you what. Larry's got a great stroke. He it's travels funny. to a lot of events, too. He plays in a lot of events. Mm -hmm. He's played in the U.S. Open a bunch of times. His fundamentals, mm -hmm. and see, we gave him the kiss of death as soon as we start talking good about him. It's not my fault. It's my fault. I said something good about him, and I apologize. He's, uh, his fundamentals are, are, you know, not what you would call textbook, but he delivers the cue beautifully. Spins it, you know, has a nice, uh, nice way of working the cue ball. I believe that's... Uh, John's girlfriend, Fallon Farley, sitting on the chair with her head yeah, popped up over the, the chair there. That's her. She was playing uh, Chuck. Yes, she played uh, earlier in the, in the day. She the guy that wins all the cues. Yeah. Chuck the cue magnet. The what? Chuck the cue magnet. Yeah, he's amazing, man. <laughs> I've seen him win like three cues in one show. He wins every raffle. He does. He, he wins does. everything. I know. And there's no skill in that at I all. Know. And not a bad player, actually. Yeah, he was shooting pretty good. But they played earlier. It's a fun tournament. I enjoy it. Yeah, this is a great tournament. Josh runs a really nice event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very professionally run tournament for sure. Well, he had a vision for one to showcase the best players in the state of Virginia and give them an opportunity to qualify and get down to the U.S. Open, which is, you know, one of the great tournaments in the professional world. Also held in Virginia, down in Chesapeake, about two hours from here. And um, he wanted to identify who the best players in the state were and give them a chance to showcase their talents and go down and play in the U.S. Open as well. And he's done that very handily for the last eight years. We always end up with sending a really good champion down there, and it's, it's great fun to be part of this. I feel very fortunate being given the opportunity to referee the, the last few matches. Larry played a very nice shot into the corner and hooked himself. Well, you made the trophies, too, for the for the winners, and they're really nice. I saw oh, thank you. I love Black Walnut. That's a great wood to work it's one of with. my favorite woods yeah. I, I really enjoy it too i do a little a little bit of woodwork yeah. on myself mm -hmm. sometimes i uh yeah i've been a woodworker for about 25 years and uh when josh asked me about he wanted to do something that was reminiscent if you've seen the trophies at the u.s open there they will see them they're the united states it's a it's a map of the united states also in black walnut you know with the trophy embossed on it and he said can we do something like that for for the virginia tournament so i've been making the uh the trophies since the first Ooh. Oh, what, man, a good stroke Double on that. Double whammy. Wow, it's not enough to miss. you got to scratch, too. Mm -hmm. That's too bad. It's usually how it goes, isn't it? He was looking uh, like he was going to get out there if he fired that in. So. Well, I saw the trophies, and they look really cool. And, we'll, and everybody will see them tomorrow at, at the finals at the very end. We'll have them on the table there. So They will. Finish the story. So uh, initially, Josh, uh, his family has some land out in the western part of the area, west of here. And um, his grandfather had harvested a walnut tree on there from their property, and that's where we made the trophies up the first couple of years. Oh, nice, nice. Very cool. Three game lead, John Newton up three to nothing in this race to nine over Larry Crisell. Again, we want to thank Simona's Cloth, Kamui Tips, VA9Ball.com, I believe is Josh's website for this tournament. Of course, visit InsidePoolMag.com for all the news and updates from around the billiard industry. Where do they fall? See. Looks like a dry break, and Larry steps to the table again. Always a unique pattern. Never see the same game of nine ball twice. That's the truth. Although you watch some players play it, and, and it'll, they play it so quickly and recognize the pattern so fast, mm -hmm. you're thinking, well, they must have seen this before. Mm -hmm. But it's almost impossible. Yeah, it really is. Very random.
pool contains all the elements. It really does, man. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a uh, all-encompassing representation of, of of everything, in my opinion. I agree. I think what's fascinating about it, my my youngest daughter um, is a uh, she's getting ready to start her sophomore year in college. She goes to Yale. She's a very bright person, and she's fascinated by this game. Doesn't play it, but will watch me for hours. Nice. Something about the, you know, the geometry, mm -hmm. the, 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 there's the sheer beauty of the game. I mean, the colors Absolutely. and everything. The, Absolutely. the noises are really very attractive, too. It's yep. a great game Absolutely. to play. Absolutely. And from the thousands and thousands of matches I've watched and streamed, it starts to take on another dimension even than that. It really does. I start to see things differently since the beginning of the course. You know, we all do. But it really, it really can go get into other dimensions. It really can. There's a lot going on in this game. Mm -hmm. Mental game. It's all in the mind. That's this game. It really is. It's about skill and repetition and practice and fundamentals. But it really comes down to the greatest players and the best matches is really, it's all in the mind. It's all a mental thing. Uh -huh. so. now it's all between the ears, I think, once you get to a certain mm -hmm. level. Larry played a beautiful one-rail kick shot. That was nicely done. And the best players, they don't take their attention off the table at no. all, ever. They're they're only interested in the table. Play, players like Rouse, okay? You know, he may close his eyes and sit there, but he, he knows what's going on. Well, they're focused on the 42 and a half square feet of green, and that's it. Have you ever watched uh, Three Cushion? Sure. See, that's that's one that it, it really transcends it for me. It's a creative game it for sure. It really is remarkable. Right, Larry's got a chance to get the 1-3 the here, and he really needs to take advantage of it. If he gets John a four-game four lead, he's going to have a really deep hole to dig out of. Nice stroke there. Well done to calm the nerves and make a good stroke on that one. Yeah, he'll smooth out. Put a nice roll on that ball. Larry is really good at that stun shot. That really takes a confident stroke, and, and he has one. We have to say that um, John has already played on this table a match yes, today. He yeah, he did. Larry he has not. That's right. Although he plays on this table all the time, but not with these lights. Not with these lights, and right, not with the pressure of playing the match. So there's a lot of lights up there. There is, and they heat the table up rather quickly. So John goes up four games to none in this race to nine. Sherry came in and was talking about how it was real hot under there, and. She said she was rooting for her son. <laughs> I talked to her about it. She wanted him to just run out, so. All right. Four to nothing, my friends. I want to thank all our Ustreamers out there for joining us via our different social networking links and all that good stuff. Alvy's here to talk to you. Uncle Alvy, wow. <laughs> I'm actually about to be an uncle. My brother Stephen. Oh yeah. Is uh, Steve Nelson's gonna have a son. First, first yeah, nephew. First one Good in our, for you. Yeah. Another little terrorizer. <laughs> All right, now I think here, Larry's, Larry's yeah. feeling the strain a little bit here. He knows he has got to get out of this rack. He played a good shot there. He did. I like the way he rolls the ball. Reminds me of kind of Rodney Morris-ish. Very much. He's got a terrific um, understanding of where the ball's going. He's got a real nice speed. Yep. Real nice speed. He just barely, he just rolls the ball around. Just roll the ball around. Yep. 
None of this uh, super spaz, smashing balls. Yep. All right, Larry's got maybe a tad more angle than he wanted here, but he's got to get on the six ball, so that's probably a good one, a good angle for him. Chris Bruner's here. I think we're going to have to interview him about putting the smack down on his mom in the last match. So I'm going to hand my mic over to him so uh, Brian can interview him for just a moment. Okay, while, and we'll let them commentate for that's a few. Good. That's a good idea. So John, so John comes back to the table, up four games to none, trying to get to five. So Chris, you've uh, after after managing to get past your mom, you went out and just just thrashed Danny Mastermaker nine to one. Yeah, I played good. Is he bleeding? No, he he missed a lot of balls. I, I broke and ran one rack, made five balls on the break. Oh my gosh, did you really? Oh wow, what a scratch there. Look at that. So um, Newton had an absolute out here and just, wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I broke him around one rack and then every time I broke, he was safe or he balls were tied up to where he couldn't get out. That's the way it is in this game sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. Some tables break better, or a lot of tables break better than others. That is true. I, I've made balls in every table I've played on today and then didn't make a ball but one time. That's true. That, yeah, that is exactly right. He also hung a bunch on this table. Oh yeah, I was played like I didn't know what I was doing. Welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, while okay, we're talking, I, I gotta like Larry to get out here. Right. You, you would hope. I, mean, I, I thought he was out the I last. I think I missed this in my match earlier. Yes, you did. I thought he was out in the last game, but he got there out. He All right, good job. I mean, the table's playing all right. I mean, the lights are making it real hot. It's crazy hot. I was I was using my scrubs for a little bit because I couldn't control my lacrosse I've been playing with, and just I just went back to my lacrosse because I just couldn't I couldn't shoot straight like I normally do yeah. and make balls. I was just I got I'm just used to lacrosse right now, so. Yeah. That happens. Yeah. So I, I have to compliment you, Chris. I watched you, and I've always said this, you have one of the most powerful strokes I've ever seen. Your jump stroke just absolutely is awe-inspiring. I mean, I, you, you fired in a couple of balls uh, on the TV table against your mom with a jump stroke, and I was, every time you pull it out, I can't wait to see what you're going to do. Yeah, I, I was lucky, man. I mean... Every one I shot at, except one, when I made it scratched. Yeah, exactly. But, I don't know. Was, you made every other ball. I should have just shot with that. <laughs> <laughs> Might have had a perfect match. Well, that, that would certainly be something we could sell on TV, I would think. Yeah. All right, so tell me about this rack Larry's got. He made two balls on the break. Uh, the four balls messed up. He's got to get on the bottom side of the four and shoot towards uh, the camera now. Okay. Because he, unless he is confident to freeze himself to this bottom rail or side rail. But even then, then he's got to roll forward and shoot to the five to the side. It's a tough shot all the way around. So what do you think? Power draw here and come back to the rail he's standing at? If, he, if, he's, got an angle, if he's got an angle, I'm shooting it with uh, top left. I wouldn't have done that. Unless it goes uh, on the side. It looks like it goes. At least he's playing it to, that's for sure. I think it might. I might not be able to see it. He got awfully close. Right. Yeah, apparently it goes. Good shot. I, didn't, I wasn't sure. This angle's tough. Yeah, he didn't help himself any here. Cutter know. bank. Yeah, I, uh, he'd have to almost cut it. In the side? Yeah, cut it and come in between a 9-8. Uh-huh. But, I mean, I think the right shot's the place safe. He might be banking it. 
Yeah. Wow, that's good. He got a little roll, it looks oh, like. he got a little jelly. Uh, he got a lot of jelly. He got a lot of jelly. Got a whole jelly donut out of that one. I'd have jumped this in by now. <laughs> yes, you would have. I don't like to waste a lot of time. But you know, I sometimes think. Wow. I've seen you play a little more deliberate, just a just a touch more deliberately, and do better. Eh, I just don't. Is it because you get bored, or yeah, that's, is that what that's it is? the main reason? I get real bored. He's, that's what I look, thought. he's got wrong angle on this, I think. He's got to almost just stop it there and shoot the eight. That's terrible with ball. Oh, well, look at this. Good heavens, he's making this a lot harder Man. than it is. I mean, that's just... Wow. Is he shaking his hand? That's, he always does that when he's trying to loosen things up. You ever seen him do that? Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen him do it playing softball. He, I played softball with Larry one <laughs> season. Every time he'd throw a ball crazy, he'd shake his wrist. He'd oh, fire, and he step, then he steps up and throws a strike. Right, <laughs> exactly. That's a good stroke there. Yeah, that's a good shot. I'd have missed it. I just don't know how he shoots with open hand bridge. He has as long as I've known him. All right, Larry Kressel gets out. Two games to four. Okay, Larry's about to break out at two games to four. A little bit softer on the break this time. All right, and Brian, I gotta get out of here. I got a match to play. Okay, bro. So I gotta play Nilbert, I think. So. All right, good luck. Thanks for spending time with us. Yeah. All right, Larry's at uh, two games to four. He just broke in and uh, made a ball. So he played safe, nicely actually. Joining me in the booth in a second will be Joshua Dickerson, tournament promoter. Welcome, Josh. Thank you, Brian. Glad to be here. Where else would I be? That's a good point. I had nothing else better to do, so I thought I'd come in. <laughs> All right, so John Newton played uh, a foul, and Larry's back with ball in hand, getting back to two to four. I was thinking with Newton with a 4-0 lead, Larry's in deep trouble, but I also know how quickly he can come back on him. Absolutely. Never can count Larry out. Both of these guys, a lot of heart. A lot of heart, a lot of history between these two. They have been rivals and have played each other on numerous occasions in uh, tournaments and money games. I'd say... Who do you think's got the best of it? Is it about 50-50? It's probably 50-50, maybe a slight advantage to Larry. Yeah, Larry's a good money player. He is that. Now, so. he's, he's not happy with that shot because uh, he's just gotten himself into a place where he didn't really want to be. Um, so Larry played safe with that one and is rolling the ball up the other end of the table. That's, um, uh, you know, he put a lot of distance in there, although he's left John a shot. That one in. Almost overcut it. it. That was yep. some shot. 
And the, I don't know if he has a shot on the three. He must have a shot. He shoots like he does. Yeah, he does. He does. He'd slow down. John's shooting very confidently. He is that. He's had a good run in the tournament so far. And when you get to this hour of the evening of the event, you know that if you win this match, you're in not only in the money, but most importantly, you're done for the day. Mm. You get to get out of here and get some rest and prepare for the next day. But you know, also, if you lose, you got at least one to two more matches before the evening's out. So John's really looking like he wants to go home and get some rest. Absolutely. Yeah, he's motivated, I think. Plus, he knows you, if you're going to beat Larry, you got to get out in front of him quickly. Absolutely. So that nine ball makes it five games to two. John Newton leads over Larry Cressel. And we just saw an advertisement for one of our major sponsors, Simona's Cloth, the finest beard cloth available. I'd like to thank Ivan Lee and his crew for uh, sponsoring us this year. And um, best cloth out there by far. There's a lot of imitators, but there's only one Simona's. So I'd like to thank them, Kamui Products with Kamui Tips and Kamui Chalk for their sponsorship as well. We are at the 2011 8th Annual Virginia State Nine Ball Championships. Uh, this is Joshua Diggerson, the tournament director and promoter, alongside my good dear friend, Mr. Brian Keller. And uh, it's Brian, and the score is four to two or five to two. It is four to two. It's four to two. Oh, it is five to two, John. That's right, John. Five to two because he just won the game. Yep. We're at uh, Diamond Billiards in Midlothian, Virginia. If you've not had a chance to get by and see this place, it is truly a sight to see. It is a player's pool room, without a doubt. It is, and and you know, just and even in addition to being a player's pool room, they're also they also work to make everybody feel uh, comfortable here. They've got all kinds of great um, fun available. They've got a terrific menu, great bar. Uh, I understand they've just recently added off-track betting. Yes, they do. And I mean, they've just—they're uh, doing everything they can to appeal to the folks who uh, enjoy a good night out here in the Richmond area. And uh, Cindy Dorsey, one of the owners of the establishment, actually just told me they actually run two pool tournaments every Saturday night in their pool room, and it's all based on your league handicap. So if you're an APA two to a four, you play in your own division. And then if you're a five and above, you play in a separate division. So I, that's a great idea to run two tournaments in one night at your pool room. Oh, wow. Larry just put a, kind of a bad stroke on that one. Ended up getting away with it because I don't think he left John much of a shot. He didn't leave him much of a shot, no. I'm, I'm thinking there's going to be a safe coming here. And uh, good call. So I think Larry can see a piece of the two ball, but he might be able to see enough where he can bank it down behind the five, seven, and nine and put the cue ball back here when we have the four ball. I think he left him a little left. bit of yeah, a shot. Yeah, I can see that. And now and I can see that. I wonder if the nine passed the seven. It's going to be close. Depending on where the seven is, it could help or hurt at this point. It hurts him to block him. Did he leave but him a no, window or is he scratching? No, he's scratching. Oh my goodness. John not looking particularly happy. Not a happy guy. I'm a happy boy. Not a happy boy. For those of you that might have heard that swallow, that was some Woodford Reserve and ginger ale. Excellent. 
I've trained you well, my son. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yes, Grasshopper has learned well. <laughs> that was a shout-out to Barry Berman having to sit during the tournament. God bless you, sir. It's just not, it's not the same. Not the same. We miss you. And Barry, for those of you that don't know, has had some surgeries in the last couple months. He's had both knees partially re uh, replaced. And Barry just hung that wow. son of a gun. Oh, dear. That's going to hurt him. If he keeps doing that, it's going to be a gonna short a march. That's going to leave a mark, I'm afraid. Yeah, we wish Barry all the best, uh, you know, in addition to uh, having to fight some health problems. He's had some um, some issues with some of his constituents, but uh, it sounds like they've worked everything out from what I hear. They're still in the process, ah. and I, I, I think hopefully by Monday we will have a resolution to the issue at hand with the U.S. Open. Wow. Now John's John is on this line. Well. Okay. You know, we're at that point in the match. There's always a point in the match where there's like a little doldrum thing that goes on where, where one or both players, you know, just kind of goes brain dead for a few minutes. I think we've reached that point. Or like, as I call it, a Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> but, but, yeah, this is a key game in the match, though, because look at the score. It's still relatively close. If John wins this game, he starts breaking away, taking a, a good little lead. If Larry wins this game and gets a good roll or two, it can easily be 5-5. Five, five. That's right. And then it's a race to four, and we got some fun to work. Or Alan Hopkins says, we've got action. We've got action. So, yep, one rail. He's going to come two rails, I suppose. Two rails of this ball. One. Oh, oh just missed it. Just missed it. Son of a gun. Guys are putting on a clinic here. Like I told JR earlier, if they played like this, I might even come out of retirement and play again. <laughs> well, no, I don't know. I played. That's a good idea. Where are you going, Nelly? John with a nice angle on the eight ball to come over for the nine. And yeah. Good shot. It's gonna be six to two. I think it's gonna be six to two here too. Yeah, John is a is a tall guy. He's about uh, six seven, I'm guessing. Six yeah, seven or six eight. Up. I remember the first time I played John was in a tournament years ago. This is gonna be thirteen, fourteen years ago nine ball tournament and all I could think was oh, good lord he doesn't need a bridge ever I've only seen one taller in Richmond and that was a friend of mine uh, from Russia his name was Stan and Stan when he would rack the balls we were at a place that had drop pocket tables and if I was at the other end of the table getting ready to break and I looked in the my end I'd say there's no balls here they must be in the side pocket he's the only guy I know that could reach to the side pockets from the end of the table <laughs> Reach in the pockets and pull wow. out. He was seven foot four. Wow! And had uh, had a cue built for him uh, by a local cue maker. I believe it was 74, 76 inches. Wow! That's like an Earl Strickland cue. Absolutely. Chapel, right? And now, now John was, just broke and scratched the side and came with. Well, the time There's is now. There's no chance. Yeah, Larry's got to get out. He's got to get out of this rack, or he's, uh, he's swimming so far upstream. This is not even funny. Looking to be down 7 2 with John breaking. Shout out to all my buddies on Facebook. Thank you very much for the kind words. I'm glad you still think my pipes are sexy. All right, Larry's making this look pretty easy. I just hope he doesn't bobble one because that's when he tends to do it. It's got a nice rhythm going. I'd like a little bit more angle in that seven ball, but he will fight to get it on the table. Very nicely done. Nice shot. Nice shot. That's perfect. Well done. All right. Comes one rail back up table. All 
All right, he did what he needed to do. Nice out by That was a very nicely run rack. The score is seven to three, six to three. Six to three in favor of Mr. Newton. Back in action here at the 2011 8th Annual Virginia State Nine Ball Championships. You are watching Larry Purcell play John Newton. The score is 6 to 3. I'm Joshua Diggerson, the tournament director of promoter, here with Brian Keller in the booth. I'd like to take a chance to thank all of our sponsors Diamond Billiards in Lothian, Virginia, for hosting the event, Simona's Cloth, Kabui Products. Brian Keller Woodworking. And so far, uh, Brian's been a great event. We've had 43 players from around the state. We are down to the last eight on the winner's side. All four of those matches are in progress, and the winners will be back tomorrow at 1 o'clock to play the final four of the winner's side. And we will be down to the final four on the one loss side by the time we finish this evening. That's terrific. You always run a nice, clean event, Josh. Thank you, sir. Well, I keep a broom nearby, so that helps. <laughs> you needed one earlier today, that's for sure. That was a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. A snow shovel, actually. So Larry's down three games to six, and this is another one of those. He kind of needs to get out here. If he can, if he can run out this rack and get the 6-4, breaking at four, four games to six. With a little bit of, he'd be the first person, first to run off two straight games. I'd, I'd start to feel pretty good about it. Absolutely. And, you know, this is, this is a big game right here. If he can get out from here, that gets it to 4-6. He's back in the game. I'm seeing a little hunger in his eyes. I, I think he's had enough of this wish-wash, missing a few balls here and there. I think a little bit of mental fatigue set in for both players on those games, and John was just able to capitalize on them. But I, I'm seeing a little more hunger and a little more determination in, in Larry's eyes. No, I think you're I right. I think he's just going to take care of business. I think you're right. He's uh, playing this rack beautifully. Nice slice, nice position. A little bump shape. Not into good position. Let's not, see what he not comes perfect, up. Perfect, but makeable. Would you shoot this with a little bit of outside, maybe just a little bit of inside to kill it off the rail? Or I would go? play with a little bit of inside because I'd I'd like to stay on this side of the side pocket if I'll, well. Hold it as best he could because yep. you play outside, you start getting towards the nine, it gets a little dangerous. You run into it. Yeah. He held it as best he could. And uh, he's, I think he's getting into a good rhythm and a good cadence. Great shot. Look at that. Killer shot. That's perfect. Wow. That was two quick racks back to back. That's the Larry Crisell I know. That's right. Brian and I have played the uh, league with Larry for many years. And uh, that's the one we know when we uh -huh. call for in a clutch. That's right. Yeah, I've seen him do runouts like that when we really needed it, and that was that was very nice. Textbook. Larry's looking to see if there's any holes in that rack. I can't imagine he found any. And they're all underneath that rack. <laughs> We're using the exactly. rack tight system here for this event. For those of you that haven't seen it, it's uh, like little re like paper reinforcements you'd have in elementary school to keep your notebook paper after it's ripped uh, the hole in the three ring notebook. And they're clear, so they, they stick to the table and give a perfect rack every time. We used the event in the, the uh, state championship last year and wanted to use them again because they're such a good product. And Larry made three balls on the break here. And uh, has a good shot on the two ball. Oh, does have a nice Long straight in shot, or maybe a little bit of angle. If he can fire this ball in, I think he's got a good chance of getting on the three, but he's got to be careful with these tight pockets. Well, 
Well, that was a pretty stout stroke. Man. Larry does a, uh, a drill that I know some of you out there use. He, uh, he will set up a ball dead center in the middle of the table, set the cue ball back in one pocket, and fire a straight-in shot with a little bit of draw and try and draw the cue ball back to the same pocket okay, with the, the object shot. ball so going in the far corner. And I've seen him do that Lose eight or ten times in a row like it's nothing. He, uh, he's got a, quite a straight stroke. When when he's when he's stroking the ball, it's pretty to watch. So now he's got a little bit of a funny angle on the four ball. He's kind of in the wrong position. He needs to be below it instead of above it. So instead, he's probably going to have to. Okay, so he took what the table gave him. Ooh, managed to roll that baby in. That was well done. Except he's bumped the nine ball into like the, the way of the eight. That's going to have some. Uh, he's looking at trying to get position to play an eight nine the billiard and make yep. it. Uh, I think so. He needs to do it too. Let's see what he's got here. That's, that's pretty sporty. Pretty sporty, absolutely. <laughs> Look at it one more time just to make sure. Smart sign of a well seasoned player. He knows what he's doing. And missed it, luck. but I think he played a little bit just of a two way shot. Outside. He did play a two way shot. Got the, he hit it just hard enough to get the eight ball to there into the table. He's left John with a really, oh, that's a tough shot. Could be jacked up over the nine. Your back cut it to the right. No, I think I tell you the position he's in. It looks like it's almost a scratch either way, particularly jacked up on the yeah, over the nine ball. I actually think the back comes on. But the issue is, if you don't hit it hard enough, and you wind up with a cue ball down below the nine, you can't make the nine ball. And depending on the position of where the nine ball is, right. it actually makes that pocket very big. So yes. if you hit it with any speed, you might go off the nine and scratch. That's exactly right. There's no bargain either way. Absolutely. Actually, he's got enough room where he can cue right next to the nine ball. Test it. And, wow. Try to play safe. Oh, that's pretty man. safe. <laughs> Can't shoot that's from safe the drink. Winning. That, uh, wow. That's a big game right there. That is, that is a big game. So that's going to give Crisell an opportunity to get to 5 6, which we talked about earlier was what he needed to be. Big game. 6 5 instead of 7 4. Uh huh. Well, I know John's going to be kicking himself. All right. He's got the legs for it. Five, <laughs> five games to six. <laughs> First, we were running for um, Powerful Pool by Max Everly and Zen Pool. That's a three-disc set he has, DVD set he has, and a book that he's uh, selling right now that he's put together. Max is a seasoned professional player out on the tour. He's been playing for many years. And uh, I highly advise everybody to take a look at his DVDs and his book. They you know, go in the real depth into not only the physical but the mental part of the game. And uh, Max was actually kind enough to be here last year to be our guest commentator. We miss you this year, buddy. Hope to see you very soon. So looks like uh, Larry made a ball in the break but couldn't capitalize making the one. Now John is back at the table with a decent shot at the two ball. Might have, have a little a little bit of difficulty cutting this ball. 
Let's see what he has from the side angle here. Oh, he missed it. Oh, wow. He did. Got very Got fortunate. a little bit of a jelly roll, though, because uh, he didn't need Larry anything. Larry stepping up, thinking he's going to flare something here. Looking at the logo for Diamond Billiards from Midlothian, Virginia, on Larry's back. Yeah. And he left John a straight in Sean and Deuce. <clears throat> Kind of surprised he did that there. That's a pretty steep angle to be shooting this four ball to get shape on the five. He's, he's not shaking, liking it. He's shaking his head because he's wondering why he did that as well. Nice shot. And then, now, do you cut this ball down the rail or do you try and flame? I, safe? I think the only shot he's got is cut it down the rail. I don't see a safe that I like. Well, he does, though. But he's not going to like that one. Larry's famous for just firing these in. Absolutely. Whether or not he pulls it off is a different story. All right, plays the safe back. Oh, that could be trouble. He left him. He can see the five and can't tell if he's got a pocket or not. No, bounced it off the nine. All right, now Larry comes to the table with some difficulties here. Five balls makeable, six balls makeable, but he's going to get back below the eight in order to make it or play the combo. Knowing how Larry thinks. He's going to play bottom left English and try and draw down long rail to the bottom rail up behind the eight ball. Kind of like that. I, I'd say exactly like that. This is the shot. Shot of the match, and he splits the wicket. So to get back to six games all in a race to three, Larry has just made a fabulous out. Was a good out, and we're at tie ball game. Six Race to three. Games all. Wow, what a turn that of events! Changes, I, I, that, yeah, that changes momentum right there, big time. That's a big momentum swing, so right? John here. calls timeout and runs to the bathroom. Probably gonna throw up or cut his wrists. I don't know which. Oh, he's back. Oh, he's back already. I thought. He was just taking a, a lap, a cool down lap. Yeah, I think he went to get his drink refill, get a hug from his sweetie. A lap from us is about 15 steps. For him, it's about four. <laughs> <laughs> all right, race to three, race to nine, with only three games to play each side, six all. Did he break dry? Nope, made a ball in the break. Oh, break. And he made the wing ball. See the one, he hasn't got much of a shot, so I see a safety coming. That's a tall bourbon there, Joshua. What do you think, it's in a boot? No. <laughs> it no, was no, a tall no. one. Oh, okay, yes, oh yes, there you go. <laughs> it was a tall one, that's, that's proper, yes. My only one for the day, and up, up until about an hour ago, it's on, always good. For no, I recommend only having one drink a day, and, and you know, if you're going to have one, make sure it's in a quart glass. <laughs> <laughs> Rule number two. <laughs> All right, John took a flyer, got a good hit on it, but left Larry a chance. The way he's queuing, looks like he can make and it easy. There yep. it is. All right, now let's look at trouble here. 
probably wishes he didn't have to get so quite so straight on in that. Wow, oh, nice shot. Nice, nice shot. Very nicely done. Just like that, he's back in the line. He's got about a half a pocket for the three ball. If he can make this past the four, he's got a Cosmo. Brian, why don't you tell the folks out there what a Cosmo is? Those that oh, you, aren't you don't think everybody knows what Cosmo is? Look, where we. <laughs> So a Cosmo was named for a dancer uh, whose name escapes me at the moment, but it was Cosmo something or other. And uh, he had a run out. He, he once broke a rack of balls and had a run out that was so easy he could dance around the table making it. And it became known as a Cosmo. Also, could be a drink in a martini glass with cranberry. Also a Cosmo. Now we're talking. <laughs> Wow. And Larry's just hung the wow. ball. He is so upset. But you notice what he did there? He jumped on He took two strokes instead of his normal pre-shot routine and just kind of took that shot for granted. Did it. And, uh, wow, cost the game. Wow. That one was a nail-biter there for a second, too. Ends up landing perfect. That is a tough shot. And wow. just That's like that, 7-6. That's a change. Yep, absolutely. Sometimes you just so thrilled to be back at the table. Oh yeah. Just make a push a little too hard through that cue. A little nervous energy and I just, just hang like in that. the corner. No comment. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We're coming to you live from Diamond Billiards, beautiful billiard room in Midlothian, Virginia for the 8th Annual Virginia State Nine Ball Championships. Sponsored by Diamond Billiards and Inside Pool Magazine. We'd like to thank them for streaming this live on high def. Almost scratched in the side there. He almost did. And I think he left him a shot. He's dry and left him a shot. I think you can see the one ball. Yeah, just enough room in between the seven and two. He should like you see it. Yes, sir, he can. Speed played that well. Nice shot. Well, we have one gentleman already on the winner side for tomorrow. Chris Trail won his match Did he? this evening. Okay. And he will be playing the winner between uh, Bobby Chamberlain and Trent. Uh, Trent Le Talbert? Talbert. Yes, thank you. Sir. I lost him in the first round. Second round. That five ball on the side beautifully. Holy cow, what a nervy shot that was. Now he's left himself almost dead straight on the six ball. He's going to have a very long shot on the side. Except that he, oh dear, oh, he's not going to like that. Trying to draw back, put a little action on it, and left it hanging on the, on the rail. I think he's hooked himself behind the eight. Yep, he's going to try and kick out of one rail. No, no, he cut it in. What a shot. You can see by his body language, he just took a big, deep breath. That was a, wow, what a sigh of relief on that one. All right, just to get back to seven all. Pay no attention to our score in the upper left-hand corner. It's a game or two behind. We're at 7-7. Seven, seven. Just an update for everybody real quick. David Hunt has advanced to the Final Four of the winner's side by beating Greg Taylor 9-2. to two. And Chris Bruner has caught a gear on the one-loss side and just beat Alex Trevino 9-1. to one. So he has only allowed wow. two games to his opponents in the last two matches. After he let his mom get, him, get five or six on. Absolutely. That's great. Well, you know, Sherry, you got to like her in that matchup. 
All right, break okay, two. Okay, here we go. That, that That's very interesting. That's the first time I've seen that in the event. Seven. Yeah, I know. First time somebody's looked at a rack. Somebody looked at a rack through the whole tournament. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But the first time I've seen somebody look at an opponent's rack. And drop. Drop break. I don't know if he left me anything, if he can go past the four or not. John put the kiss of death on him by looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> Happens every time. Well, there was a, a local champion for years. He would play, and he would keep a uh, red handkerchief in his back pocket. Whenever someone would be going shoot the shot in his uh, direction, he would pull it out, and he would have to wipe off a little chalk dirt off of the shaft. See that red flag waving in the air? You thought it was a matter door there for a minute. <laughs> Somebody I know. Oh no, he was a uh, local champion and, and did really well and actually finished in the, I think the top ten of the U.S. Open back in the seventies. No. John trying to hide the three ball has left it for Larry. Brian, I got to tell you, uh, last year we had the stream for the first time, and, and Jr. and Alvin came down and uh, set it up and did just a marvelous job. And I, you know, I, I said, man, that's just perfect. They bring that back next year, we're good to go. And they not only brought it back this year, but brought it back with some custom. They've got the high def cameras, we got some additional lighting, the scoreboard in the background, so we know what's going on, and then the, the, the scoreboard also for the live stream. So, hats off to Jr. and Alvin and company. They, they do a tremendous job. So, you know, that that shows you why they have the uh, Seminole Tour. They're streaming all their events. Exactly. So you guys did a bang up job, man. And really excited to have you here. And it's just day one. We still got another day of action. I know. Larry played a good little safe there, left, left John real tough. He might be able to bank this three back to where he is. It feels a little froggy. Um, that's what he's doing. That's what it looks like. Oh, no, he playing him behind the, behind the eight ball. Maybe he's got him. So, let's see. Bruner would jump it. I'm kind of thinking Larry might jump it. That's That's not too bad of a jump. He this is a to tough kick. shot. I mean, two kick. rails at this. Or is he going one rail? Two. Oh, wow. He tried to go one. Went between them. How Holy do you go smoke. between those balls? I didn't think it would fit. Now, do you run out from here or do you shoot the 3-9? He should just run out from here. It's a simple out and no, no problem balls. He should absolutely run out. Let's, let's, uh, let's see if he gets greedy. Nope. No ride on the Redding tonight. Sorry, Mattia. <laughs> No Floydsters on this one. No Floydsters. This is a Floyd-free area. <laughs> yes, it is. All right, John's on the five ball. Every pocket's clear. He's got uh, he's got executed. Stop, stop, stop. Good shot. I think he's trying to draw it. Didn't get very far. You can tell he wasn't too pleased with that shot, but he'll take it. Better than sitting in the chair. Absolutely. That'll nice work. shot. He's got the right angle for the eight. Looking good. I like him from here. Absolutely. So let's look at him. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Lost uh -oh. that one a little bit. He jumped up on it as he was shooting. Yeah, it's just that, that just, it's such a demanding game that, you know, even the best players do a bonehead move like that. Like, they all, they like all the do, hackers. they all deal with it their own way. Yeah, some, some get mad and throw things. Wow. I personally like effort. He just smiles and Laughs. scratches his hair and comes up with something miraculous. Yeah, makes it, shot. gets position. So. Exactly. All right, so he's left Larry, left Larry a shot. 7-7 seven, seven here. No gimme. This is where he's got to fire this in. That's 
Kressel. Nice yes. shot by Kressel. Nice shot Eight, there. seven, Larry Kressel. Seven, Mr. Kressel, after being down four scratch, has clawed back to an eight, seven lead. He's on the hill, first one on the hill, and ready to go. But remember, John Newton last year, four straight hill, hill wins after being down anywhere from one to two games. His opponent on the hill came back and won four straight games. Guy's got a lot of heart. This is going to be a great finish. Eight, seven, Larry Kressel. All right, Larry's breaking off on the hill. Can't afford a scratch here. Wow. Oh, nice kind of jinxed him there. <laughs> Actually, it kissed him in. Commentator's jinx. It, it was in motion. Now. Can't afford it. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> wow. All right, now John going to have to show his heart. That reminds me of a saying by... A great Grady Matthews yeah. in a match. He said, I know all about the vagaries of nine ball. It reminded him of marriage. <laughs> the, un too. the unfairness of it. Me too, all three of them. <laughs> <laughs> Not your current wife. She's a lovely Not woman. Not my current wife. No. Rebecca, if you're out there. Oh, she's not. Don't we worry. love you. And the woman makes one of the best brunches I've ever had in my life. That is true. Just like that, looks like it's going to be a hill hill match to see who advances to the final four on the winner side. This is a barn burner, I knew it. So, Mr. Newton with this shot on the nine ball to get to hill hill. We'll have one rack, we'll race to nine. Race to one, good luck you guys. Both these gentlemen will be back tomorrow. One will be back tonight. Good luck you guys. Eight games all. Race to nine. Larry Crusell, John Newton. Newton to break. This is the last winter side match? No, we still have one in progress. Uh, one in progress, okay. Trent, Trent Talbert, Talbert and Bobby, Bobby Chamberlain, Chamberlain are still in progress. All right, here's John the break. That ball's moving. And he scratched. Oh, wow. Wow is right. I used my Karnak ability on the last oh, rack, apparently. Didn't see that one coming. <laughs> Wow, how about that? It's the easiest to have bounce, though. Larry's got a tough little layout here. Getting from the two to the three is going to be interesting. I think you can play the, the three down here in this corner pocket. Just make sure you get a shot on it. Don't get uh, caught by the eight there. Four up there behind the six. He's got the four is here. Oh, that's, so that's the okay. Uh, no, he's fine. He's, he's, I think he's okay. He's gonna have to come two rails for the four ball. Even if he Three runs into the five ball, I think he's okay. He won't. Good shot. That's fine. Big bounce. Oof. So that one kind of done it on him. Died on the rail. Great shot. Great shot. Boy, that's gutting. That's gutsy. Now, here's the shot right here. You got to come with the shot because you jacked up over the H. You got to draw back at least. Well, now from this angle, he might go up and back with this. That would, I think that's the shot. Alvin and I both agree. You just have to shoot this ball with follow and just come straight back up the table and get a shot. Just really don't overpower the, the ball because it will run out and uh, rattle on you every time. Oh, he let up on his stroke. Yes, he did. And he. 
left him covered by the eight ball. Looks like John's going to the bag. I think I don't know, he's going got one rail. Or get one rail I think it's a gutsy shot. One like rail on this rail. ball. That's what he's looking oh, at. He's looking at a one rail here, right? The value of the jump shot. If you can control it, you draw it back about six inches. The nine's not in play, and you got a straight-in shot on the six ball. You don't. You make this, you're not guaranteed a shot. Wow. Great shot. Wow. Great shot. Absolutely. <laughs> Judging that is very difficult, shot. being that far away from the uh, from the rail. You're absolutely right. Yeah, nice shot there, running into the seven. Bump the seven down a little close to the pocket. Just stuns this over a little bit. Now, do you just shoot this and stun over a couple inches? Great shot. Well, well man, this has been here. quite a match. But John, John Newton, Newton overcomes a great comeback from Larry Crisell to take the match 9-8 on the hill after being up 4-0. Crisell fought his way back, and John Newton wins it nine games to eight. What a match, Joshua. That was terrific. Fantastic match. Brian, thanks for being here with us today. As My always, pleasure. We'll be back in a few minutes with a one-ball side match. Great. Thanks.